So what do you do when things go wrong in the field? Stick around and we'll get right to it. I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into my field repair kit. Now I have started treating this kind of like my go bags and this is the base unit that I carry with me if I'm going to be gone more than a couple of hours. If it's a short outing where I'm just doing a parks on the air activation locally and I'm going to only be gone for maybe two or three hours, I'm probably not even going to carry this with me. As soon as it becomes an overnight trip, the field repair kit definitely gets tossed into the vehicle. Now, if it's going to be a longer trip, say two, three, four days, or if it's a big event like field day or winter field day, I'm probably going to throw at least a couple of extra items into this kit to supplement things. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, I'll try to leave links to as much of the stuff in the bag, including the bag itself, down in the description below if you're interested in it. Keep in mind, those may be affiliate links. If so, it doesn't cost you an extra dime. I just make a little bit of a profit off of that if you use those links. So let's start diving into this. And I've done several upgrades over uh, the last three, maybe four years since I built this bag. One of the first things you're going to find right on top is an analyzer and you just need a good analyzer in the field if something does go wrong. This can help you solve a lot of uh, small issues with your antenna if something's just not functioning quite right. Now, next up in the kit, and this is a definite must have for everyone, and that is a multimeter. Now, I did upgrade my multimeter, uh, about a year ago, I suppose, and I went with a Klein Tools CL or Charlie Lima 390. And the reason I went with this over the cheaper uh, multimeter that I carried before was because I wanted this amp clamp in here. And this one will do both AC and DC, so it can help me troubleshoot things or just figure out how much uh, power something is consuming from a battery. So definitely a great item to have, especially when you gotta start troubleshooting. All right, let's carry on digging through this pocket. Uh, electrical tape, always a handy item to have. And next up, we've got a few tools in here. So let me get this out of the bag. So this is basically just a bit driver that I've got on hand, uh, and it'll cover pretty much anything I could possibly need. Now, keep in mind, in addition to this, I also keep a Leatherman Wave in my pocket all the time. So a lot of the things that you see here on the table, like the bits here and here, and this particular driver, this is a Leatherman ratcheting driver. Let's see, I may have that thing locked right now. But yeah, you can see that that is actually a ratcheting driver. But a lot of these I may use strictly with my Leatherman tool, but I can also use these bits with these other drivers. This is a handy uh, little thing that I have found recently. It's by Klein Tools. Uh, I love the fact that it's got this little finger grip on the end of it. So as you're ratcheting, uh, it, it just gives you a little bit better dexterity than some of the other drivers I've tried in the past. So this thing will accept uh, a couple of different types of bits. And I also have the ability to uh, adapt this up to a quarter inch uh, socket drive set if I needed to. But just a real handy item to have in your kit. Now, in addition to the bits that I keep in here, I also keep this little driver set here. It's got uh, metric on one side and American Standard on the other side. And all of these bits uh, will work with this driver. So they'll fit right in there, giving us a handy little ratcheting driver set. I've never found a use in the field for these larger ones as far as ham radio is concerned, but I have used these on other things that I might need to tighten up when we were out in the RV. Next up, we've got a Plano Tackle Box Kit. This is a small one that just happens to fit really well in the bag that I chose, and I've got all kinds of different bits and bobs that I might need. Everything from extra toroids to ferrite beads, of course, the mandatory zip ties that you got to have, different connectors and adapters that I might need in the field, and the ability to repair coax in the field. 
Also keep some electrical connectors over here. If I needed to do a quick repair, you can see a dog bone insulator in this compartment over here. And then I've got just literally all kinds of various adapters and things. There's even a micro SD card reader uh, with a thumb drive if I needed to do something with that. We've got heat shrink cable in here. Here's some uh, bits and bobs for repairing Anderson power poles. I keep uh, this. This is actually part of a kit for my infed half wave antenna. I'll show you why I keep that in here in just a second. There's more heat shrink tubing down there. There's fuses for everything that you could possibly need in my setup anyway in the field. So if I do happen to blow a fuse, I've got spares of those. Little bitty things that I just think might come in handy, like this little night eyes carabiner here. Uh, this might be useful if you were trying to attach an antenna to the end of some string or rope. So if I think it could be useful, I go ahead and put it in here. If I run into a situation where uh, I needed something in the field at one time or another and I didn't have it, then I usually will come back here and in here and add uh, it to this particular kit. Although it is getting pretty full, so I'm not sure what else I might be able to fit in here before we uh, couldn't close the case anymore. I do have the adapters over here for the uh, antenna analyzer. So I've got an adapter here that takes me from the end connector on the rig expert antenna analyzer that'll take me over to BNC and another one here that will take me to SO239. Over here, I have a soldering iron just in case we needed to solder something in the field. That is one of the things the solder is over in that little uh, bits and bobs box that I showed you guys a minute ago. We also have a small screwdriver down in here. This is a double ended screwdriver and I've probably actually got too many screwdrivers in this kit, but each end has a different driver and each end is reversible. So it gives me four different drivers in this particular kit. I don't even remember uh, what the name brand is on this one. Let's see, PHG18. Uh, I don't know if that's really a name brand or maybe more of a model number, but in either case. Uh, I also have solder over here. This is a little bit larger than what I keep in the other box, just in case we've got a larger job. This is a little tool that I have had for years. I don't remember where I came up with it. Uh, and I don't know that I'll be able to find a link to this one, but this has just got all kinds of different files in the end of this tube. They all, uh, you can pull out any one of them that you might need and can go ahead and put it in this end of the tool. Like I said, I don't know if I can find a link for this or not. I've had that guy floating around in different tool bags for many years now. Over on this side of the bag is just another screwdriver. This one happens to be by Craftsman. One of the things I like about this one is the end of it spins. So if you're working on something, it's pretty easy to keep it in your hand, keep turning it and allows this end to spin freely. The bits come in and out on this end with just a quick tug of this. And I've got an entire bit set for this particular screwdriver in here. So a few smaller Torx bits. We've got some Phillips over here. On the other side of it, we've got more Torx and some flat bits on this side. I also keep a USB stick in here. This one though is not designed for storage. You can plug this in and then plug in another USB device on the other end. And it gives you a digital readout of exactly how much uh, power that device is consuming. I'm not sure why this is down in there, a random Allen key. Speaking of that, Allen keys might not be a bad addition to this particular kit. Again, over the three years, I've always kind of uh, went back and upgraded things, added things, subtracted things, and Allen keys might not be a bad thing to have in here. Down in the very bottom, we've just got a hank of wire. Uh, this could be used for building an antenna. I uh, also have some of the elastic uh, in here that comes with my infed half wave kit. So we could use this and some of the bits and bobs out of the other box to actually build an infed half wave antenna in here. And as you would expect, I also keep a spare winder over in the side so I can literally build an antenna in the field if I ever found myself needing to do so. Let's see, we got a few more zip ties down in the bottom and I think that is everything, guys. 
Now I did tell you that that was a base kit. Two tools that I would definitely add to that kit for an event like field day, winter field day, or any time I'm going to be traveling more than overnight, say two or three days, would be these two tools here. This one is a power pole crimper, so it allows me to do quick repairs should I find myself needing to attach a power pole. This one here is a coax crimper, so I would be using this one if I needed to repair the end of a coax in the field. While I don't keep spare coax in this particular kit, I do have the ends for making up just about any type of connection that I would need while I was out and about. So that would include both the uh, PL259 connectors and BNC connectors. So there you have it guys. There's everything that I carry in my field repair kit. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.